All right, so this is what we're working with here. This was the coat closet. Uh, when we moved into this house, things were kind of backwards here. So we had our, uh, our little coat closet over on this end. Uh, it has the, you know, hanger uh, rod in it and everything. And interestingly, it's right in the middle of our, our kitchen area. So we've got our, um, you know, our kitchen area is right here and dining room table and all that kind of good stuff. But kind of out of place for a coat closet. So we've lived with it for the last uh, five years here in this house and it's time to make some changes. So anniversary this year, uh, the SSL family mom said, let's do a pantry. So let's get to it. All right, so I've got all of my strips uh, cut out here, uh, ready for my supports for the shelves. Um, and uh, just the way this house was designed and where this closet is that I'm turning into a pantry, it's kind of in the center of the home. Um, it also kind of supports the stairs above us and below us, and it's kind of like the support structure for the center of the home. So um, there's a, probably a lot of utilities and uh, studs, uh, you know, doubles and triples and things like that behind the wall here. Uh, my stud finder is just straight up not working in here. I don't know why, I don't know if this wall is furred out or who knows what's behind it. So there's a couple ways you can use to find studs if you do not have a stud finder or your stud finder is not working properly um, in certain situations. So um, tried and true method is uh, just to grab an old nail. Now since this is going to be covered by my strip, I can poke some holes back here and uh, test out some theories. Now what I generally do is knock on the wall and I can hear the difference in the sound right here. And so I can pop a nail in there and I can feel that that's a stud. So I know I've got a stud right there so I can mark that. Um, I, found, I was using my stud finder and I found a few other spots where the stud finder picked up a stud and uh, tested that out with the nail and there's nothing there. Um, the measurements aren't 16 inch on center here and so I'm not sure what's going on behind the wall but uh, that's one way you can test and be sure before you start screwing things together and, and end up missing studs. Okay, so just a couple things about uh, screws and nails and, and how I generally secure things. Um, I'm a big fan of screws over nails for a lot of reasons. Um, screws are stronger, they pull things together tighter, um, generally will last longer in most cases if you use good screws, and uh, you also have the ability to take things apart. And uh, I've changed my mind and things, you know, projects change and I reuse things a lot. And being able to take screws out and reuse the screws and reuse the wood is a huge advantage to me. So one of the things that I have found to be absolutely amazing are these star bit screws i've got these at, get these at home depot um, i started using these when i built my deck and these are just hands down the absolute best screws i've ever used the uh, there's very few defects in the box they are you know more expensive than nails that's for sure um, the star bits never slip uh, i can reuse these screws a million times and they don't strip out even if i come at an angle and and you know even if the bit doesn't doesn't seat properly and I, I kind of strip it a little bit, it's still I can still get the screws in and out. They work very, very well. And so I highly recommend these screws. Um, another thing that has just changed my, my world as far as construction goes is uh, a nice drill. I found this DeWalt kit, and I'll put a link in, to this kit in the description or these two products, but this is just their 20-volt drill. The only cordless drill that I found at any of the big box stores or online in any easy way anyway that is at least assembled in America. Um, the rest of the stuff that I've found is all made in China completely. Now most of these components are probably made in China or Japan, but it is, they do have a factory here where they assemble and test these and they do repairs in the United States as well as far as I know. Um, I also got this impact driver which has been a huge help in uh, putting things together man this thing just sinks screws in uh, in seconds uh, very easily and they both take the same battery pack both are assembled in the United States um, and again I'm using these uh, these star bits and each box of those screws comes with these star bits so I have a bunch of these laying around now um, and they they last forever too so very happy with those um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, these put in and uh, from here on out it's just gonna be a lot of repetition doing the same thing so I'll show that uh, show the progress as we go here
So if you're not familiar with why an impact driver is so much better than just a regular old screw gun or drill, um, the impact driver actually uses kind of like a hammering motion as well as the, the twisting motion to put the screw in. Um, and, I, and I can't explain how much better it feels and how more quickly it just zips a screw in than a regular drill. Um, it just is a satisfying feeling for some reason to use one of these things. So if you don't have one, they're not super expensive and they make a huge difference. Okay, so I chose particle board for this project. Yeah, particle board, I know. I never, never liked using this, uh, this kind of wood, or if you can call it wood, it's basically glued together sawdust, right? So, uh, but I did a few tests at, uh, at the lumber yard or the big box store, and uh, this seems to be the strongest uh, it without, and I wouldn't say strongest, but it doesn't bow as much over a long distance. And so uh, I talked with a few guys there and they seemed to agree. Uh, it was a little bit better than MDF. Uh, the only issue is the edge here is not so pretty, but I'm gonna try to, to fix that up. We're gonna be painting over this and paint uh, does very well on this type of wood. So I think this will work out very well. I'm using three quarter inch here. Um, I want this to be able to hold up to anything and so hopefully this will uh, will do well for the pantry shelves. Yeah, I'm just going to use some brad nails to uh, get this all secure down. Obviously, it doesn't need to have too much holding strength just since it's uh, resting on these supports anyway by weight. But uh, this is just another tool that I've kind of become a fan of. I guess I've become a DeWalt fanboy. But uh, uh, this is a real nice little tool. Um, this one here handles up to two inch brads. And uh, these aren't expensive either. I think they paid 69, maybe 70 bucks for this. And uh, man, is this thing handy to have around. So lots of uses for, uh, for a little brad nailer if you get your hands on one. So this is easily my least favorite part of doing all these projects. I love building things. I love to put things together and see it all come together. Um, <laughs> when it comes to the when it comes to the final details, I, uh, I prefer to skip that part, but uh, <laughs> it's just not as exciting to me. That's why there's four or five projects around here that need to be finished still, probably. Well, there we go. I think it looks uh, pretty decent. Looks like we might need to add a second coat of paint in some places, but uh, hey, this will work perfectly for a little pantry. We've got some more things to come down the road. Uh, I will be doing some canned goods uh, storage, some kind of specialized little, little uh, canned uh, goods storage uh, drawers and shelving and uh, um, potatoes and onions uh, storage and all that kind of good stuff. I'm going to be com compartmentalizing things here, but uh, for now, this will work. We'll see how the SSL family mom likes it.